Are you on crack? What? What? Are you kidding me, Plarium? Is this a joke? Plarium, this is the final reward! Hey guys, that's your sure coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. I'm glad to have you all here with me today. Listen to me rant and rave and vent for 10 minutes. What could be better, right? Seriously, though, send us some positive vibes, some love your way, especially if you need it out there today. Uh, guys, I mentioned this. I've alluded to I, I have my, I'm sure we all have this, right? Our little pet peeves inside the game or our big pet peeves inside the game. One of mine that just happened to me, this is not the topic of the video, but it just happened, and I've never mentioned it before, but it really bothers me. It irks works me big time and that is the fact that their fly-in notifications come right above my head right here you know what i'm talking about i was in a dungeon right I, I think i had a champion without gear on or something right and i went to like click team setup or to exit or whatever and i hit the banner and not only was I taken to a page that I don't care about, right, because I accidentally hit the banner, but then I was outside the dungeon and back in my my bastion getting pop-up ads. Anybody have that experience? It was probably a bad job explaining it, but that's one little thing that gets me. But you know what a big thing is, guys? It's like it's going to be one of those days, Jerry. Run. Uh, you know what it is? It comes down to two champions. I want to bring your attention to two champions. And I'm trying to remember what affinity one even is, the, the epic. Plarium, are you on crack? What is that? It is Crackarth. Crackarth. Oh, Crackarth. You, you, odds are you have no idea who the hell Crackarth is or what I'm talking about her in this video. Uh, Crackarth is the final reward that you get from Doom Tower Normal. Uh, she's it. She's the Doom Tower Normal reward. She must be so great grinding for years to get your hands on this champion. She must be like the best epic in the game or one of the top epics in the game right she's gotta be she's hp based she's got a boatload of hp 20k hell yeah what does she do magnificent scepter hell yeah magnificent armand's a magnificent are we talking that good that annoying anyway attacks one enemy we have a 40 percent chance to remove a random debuff from a random ally Oh, okay, okay, it must get really good at the A2, the A3. Uh, attack one enemy, place a revive on death on everybody. No, no, just this champion for two turns. Uh, okay, uh, okay. Uh, this lordly might must be the most broken skill in the game then, right? Uh, place a strength and a shield uh, on all allies for two turns on a three turn. No, no, a four turn cooldown. Wait, what a... I, wait, her passive must just be broken, right? Increase the value of shield buffs on all allies by 15% while this champion's alive. What? What? This is the final reward! Hey, just laugh if you're mad. Just laugh. Are you kidding me, Plarium? Is this a joke, Plarium? I kid a little bit, but you know what, guys? Things must really change when we get to the best epics from Doom Tower. They must really look a lot different, you know? Let's take a look at my man, Void Legendary. Jinro, the nose. I mean, the stork. I guess the same, right? I love his nose. I love a good schnoz. I love a big schnoz. That's why Jinro, the stork, it must be like distant relatives uh, to Corvus the Corruptor. Look at that thing. Who's got a longer nose? What do you What do you guys think? Should we have a nose ranking? God knows I rank everything else in this damn game. <laughs> Should we have a nose ranking video? Ah, oh, we'll come after the wings video. Anyway, I like, he's got a little bit more narrow and longer of a nose, Ginro the Stork. I'll thump him if he calls me big nose again. I keep talking this nose stuff. I'm going to get demonetized. Let me, let me digress. Uh, so what does he do? He's got the plunging beak. A1. Attacks one enemy. 60% chance of increasing the cooldown of one of the target skills by two turns at random. Not a bad A1. Uh, Befuddle. Attacks one enemy. Stun for two turns. Will ignore block debuffs, block damage. Pretty cool A2, but nothing that cruel, you know? Cool. You know, two turns. Stun. Plenty of epics have that. Tuok the Wanderer I'll give you as Exhibit A. Uh, Andrysia as Exhibit B. There's others. Uh, Gatewatch Stance. We gotta increase attack on everybody and a counter attack on every- Oh! Oh, it's it's only him. Oh, it's 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 only him, and it's on a four turn cooldown too. Okay, well he must have a busted passive, right? Increases champion's defense every time the counter attack. Okay, it resets every turn. Okay, uh, when attacking, converts resistance to accuracy. That's actually cool. Uh, at the end of this champion's turn, plays a provoke on enemies with increased attack buffs. That's awesome, but it's on a four turn cooldown, and it's at the end of his turn. It's not like the end of the round or the beginning. 
I don't know. I guess that's how, well, how else would it be, Ash? You know, I guess it could be as soon as uh, an enemy receives an increased attack buff, places a provoke on that enemy on a four turn cooldown. But again, I would want it all enemies. Eh, I digress. I digress. His kit is, honestly, I have a little soft spot for Jinro, Genro the Stork. Genro, Genro, whatever. Tomato, tomato, I don't know. I have a soft spot for him. I think he's kind of cool, but he's certainly not void legendary cool. And clearly, the other people agree who have got their hands on him. Odds are that you guys don't even think about these champions because you don't probably have them yet, right? Ouch. But I want to take it one step further. The Doom Tower rewards here, thanks to Hellahades.com, the best website in the biz, right? You can see the, the, the legendaries. Thea the Tomb Angel, quick tier ranking, right? Or quick grading. Thea the Tomb Angel, C+. Euro Soul Cage, A+. Gomlock Skyhide, C-. Varl the Destroyer, B minus, Bathsatha, B, Vassal the Seal, uh, B, B, Chromax Moonblood, F, Gronjar, F, Ginro, F. However, I will say, I just gave him a compliment, so now let me take a shot at him. Hellhades.com, man. Boom. Four star, four star rating on Gronjar. Ugh. Ugh, the second to last legendary that you get from, I'm, I promise I'm gonna make a point here. Let me just crap on one more champion real quick to just really drive it home for you guys in the back. Gronjar, dude, this guy, I just did a guide on him on my champion guide channel and boy, it was tough to say anything nice other than this look, guy looks badass, man. He looks like right out of the forge. His head on fire. Yo, what up? <laughs> but how about this dude? How sucky is this? He's got a two-time hitter. Each hit has a chance of increasing the burn. He's got a two-time hitter. He's removing block debuffs. Yay. Uh, and then he's got an AoE burn. AoE burn on a four-turn cooldown. That's what we're waiting two years to get? He won't receive damage from burns, and if they tr try to put a, a freeze on him, he has a chance of removing them and turning him into a burn. Okay, whoop de dupt whoop de dupt Seriously. If I'm looking for a four-turn Frost Spider specialist after two years of grinding Doom Tower, then whatever. It's stupid. It's stupid. Ranjar sucks. These reviews are kind. 1.7s. Anyway, I digress, guys. Here's the big issue, right? Listen. All these champions, I can do the job of the, the game designer whose job it is to balance the game. I can do the job for you. It's so easy. One month, instead of doing two champion rebalancings or buffs, we can go through and we can buff about six of these because it doesn't make any sense, really. And the biggest thing, too, in addition to everything that we talked about, right, the buffs that clearly just, they need to happen, right? I don't know about you guys, but... Anybody out there who's gotten all of the Doom Tower, you know, normal or hard champions, depending on where you are, dude, I've lost interest in all secret rooms now that they took away. Now it's just forge materials, man. My forge materials, I get from these dudes anyway. I hate the fact that the secret rooms are, there's nothing that I'm going for anymore. Hey, brilliant, brilliant idea, right? This is why they pay me the big bucks here on YouTube to share these ideas with a developer who doesn't listen to me. The thing is, guys, is give us freaking awakenings for these champions i quit this is your company you're our boss you can't quit yes i can i'm quitting let us go in the secret rooms i don't care if they i don't care if they started all the way at the top the beginning again they are the tomb angel but just let us start unlocking the awakenings for all these Doom Tower uh, champions. Either that, or just let us go through again and get the empowerment champion to empower them, right? So that way we can have empowered crappy ass champions. That's what everybody wants, right? Uh, let's really quickly, really quick, because I'm not done yet. Chromax Moonblood. Let's take a quick look at Chromax Moonblood. Chromax, I've been dying. I've been absolutely dying. And you know what I need to save me? Well, you know what the antidote is? It's an attack one enemy placing a block buffs for two turns or an AoE four turn provoke. What? What? All right, guys, I've got it off my chest. This needs to be said. It needs to be discussed. It needs to be talked about, man. The cool thing about Doom Tower is is I still think the Doom Tower is the best update in the history of Ra Raid Shadow Legends. There's so many bosses. It, it was cool. I love the secret rooms. I love the restrictiveness. Gives us reasons to test out new champions. It's all awesome. But the rewards have been power corrupt, and they actually were never good, most of them. Now, they do have some bright spots. I have to be fair, because I don't, you know, I got to play devil's advocate a little bit. Archmage Helmet is a goat. I love that he's the first epic available, too, because you need him. By the time that you get... Archmage Helmet, as the first normal champion that you get from Doom Tower, 
most accounts use him. They need him. They love him. And that makes all the sense in the world. So they should get, you would think, they should get maybe, generally speaking, a little bit better from there. But for whatever reason, they get a little bit worse the further down that you go. Now, I love Dark Kale. I think that Ryan's okay. I think that Akoth is eh, eh. I mean, a spider burner against Spirit Affinity. You know, I know some of you guys like Akos, so I apologize, but I just gotta be real. He's all right. I mean, they've released a lot more epic burners that I would prefer over Akos, Skrank being the most recent, right? Anyway, I digress. Gwyneth is okay, Taya is meh, Z Itchy is meh, she can hit hard single target, but who cares, man? I mean, it, there's nothing exciting about that. Liberga, same thing. And then we already talked about the hard. So yeah, guys, I, I think that they, uh, why don't you think they go in and do that? There's a few random things in the game, right? That they're just not, they're just not addressing. It's almost like they're ignoring. The, the epic empowerment. Why can't we empower epics, man? Who cares? There's been this Herculean divide right now in the game between legendaries and mythicals because we can empower them and, you know, blessings and everything like that, right? And the blessing stats go up, the rarity goes up. There's been this big gap now because there's no way to empower and take advantage of our duplicate epics. Why not? What is it gonna hurt? What is it gonna hurt? You know, people still want legendaries. They'll still want mythicals, newsflash. Even if epics get better, people will still really want mythicals and legendaries in the game, right? So why not add a little epic empowerment? You know, it's so easy to do. You simply add epics to this thing. I'm not even a game designer and I feel like it's not, not that hard, you know? Just add them. And then the token trader, man. I got another idea for you guys. Another idea for raid. The token trader's been the same. I have 7,000 life tokens for no reason. Because sometimes, just for the hell of it, uh, yes, I'm a dirty, disgusting, pay to win, crack and whale piece of poopy, right? But that aside, sometimes I just have it in my stupid, dumb brain. My stupid YouTuber noggin. I have it in there. I don't know why I'm holding a pen. It's only game. Why do you have to be mad? But I have it in my brain that someday I'm going to use these because someday they're going to add a damn refresh button. But again, this Guardian Ring token trader, it doesn't have to just be champions. It could be soul stones and, and other cool things that we need inside the game. There's so many resources. It could be, heck, I, you know what? A mythical skill book, whatever the most scarce resources are. Are people going to take advantage of them? Probably not, like, for you know, to sacrifice legendaries for. But... Why not, if they're not gonna give us empowerment on epics, why can't we sacrifice them for, you know, 10 life, 20, 100 life tokens, right? Like a little bit of life tokens, really, you know? These are the simple little things that would go a long way to me to making, you know, some of these areas of the game that have like great intentions, a great foundation, and just building something that is actually, I don't know, usable or viable for the long term of the game. Guys, I feel, I feel myself getting off topic and already ranting about everything in this, in this game. I want to end with a note of positivity real quick. I love this game. For better or for worse, I'm the sucker. Scarlet letter S on my face. Because I love this game. And I just want, I just want some of these like kind of low-hanging fruit quality of life things to be added. They've came a long, we've come a long way in this game, to be honest with you. I don't think any of this stuff existed when I started playing none of this stuff, right? Uh, but that being said, there's still some things they can improve upon. Balancing being one of them, and some of these other areas. What irks you? Go ahead and vent a little bit in the comments below. What do you want Raid Shadow Legends to change? Let me know. Much love, and as always, take care, guys.